I've got a problem where the power keeps tripping in my kitchen. Every time I turn the circuit on, it just trips. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I'm gonna troubleshoot it, how I'm gonna work out what the issue is and hopefully solve it. Now it's a very basic toolkit today. So I've got a multimeter. Now you shouldn't use this on the mains. This is just when it's turned off. I'm gonna use this to find the fault. Um, pair of pliers just for moving wires around, long nose VDE pliers, a couple of screwdrivers to get sockets and things off, socket tester just so I can see what's live and what isn't, crocodile clip in case I need to link anything out when I'm using the multimeter, obviously not to be used with any mains but absolutely fine with just the battery in this and small level so that I can get sockets back on straight. I'll leave the links to those tools in the description below in case you need any of them. So starting at my fuse box. Currently everything is on because I've actually already a couple of steps ahead but I'm going to go back and show you all the steps I did. So the problem I have is when I do this kitchen circuit on 20 amp breaker here, every time I push this up to turn it on, the RCD trips. So this thing trips here which covers all of these circuits. You might have a more modern board where you've got just an individual RCBO on everything that basically has an RCD and an MCB which are these breakers combined but I don't have that, I've just got the two, so what I'm going to do is keep the kitchen off and then I can reset this RCD and get the power back on on the rest of these. The first thing you've got to do is identify the type of circuit you've got and you can usually tell this based on the amps and the rating on the breaker. So mine here, this kitchen is on a 20 amp, a B20, so that means the circuit's rated for 20 amps maximum before this would blow in theory. And so this is probably a radial circuit. If it were a ring circuit, it'd probably be a 32 amp. And the difference between a ring and a radial is that a ring has two cables going back to the consumer unit. So you've got one, basically you've got power coming from both sides into every socket. Whereas on a radial, they're just a daisy chain and the last one doesn't go back to the board. So mine, I know is a radial because I've changed the socket covers in this kitchen before. But if you're not sure, have a look at the board and you can probably work it out. It'd be a 32 if it's a ring or a 20 amp if it's a radial. Now the reason this matters is because you need to split the circuit to try and identify where the problem is. So the first thing I'm going to do is split the circuit by taking a socket off where I think it's roughly halfway in the circuit and then I can put the power back on and if it trips I know that it's on that half of the circuit and if it doesn't trip I know it's on the other half. So you can see this is part way in the middle of the circuit because you've got two cables going in and out. So what I'm going to do is just remove both of these. So I'm effectively splitting the circuit up. And then I'll put the power back on and see if it trips or not. So now I've got all the cables separated so that when I put the power back on, I know that it won't go any further than this socket, but the incoming on these will still be live. What I'm going to do is flick this breaker back up. And if this RCD trips, I will know that the fault is on that half rather than the later half of the circuit. So I flip that up. Okay, it hasn't tripped, so I know the fault is in the later half of the circuit. So what I'm gonna do is go and do the same thing and split the circuit further down. But first I'm gonna reconnect that socket so that the power can continue. So I've got this socket reconnected. I'm just gonna screw it back on and I like to use this mini level just to make sure it's level. So I've got this socket back on. Nice and level, and screws vertical is my preference, but I know it's not everyone's bag. So the next thing is to split the circuit somewhere else. This is our utility room, so we've got a washing machine and tumble dryer. And I had suspected that the fault might be in here, where the washing machine had previously tripped a few weeks back. And we've also got an outdoor socket spurred off here. And we've had quite a bit of rain, potentially some water in there that could also be causing it to trip. So I'm gonna split the radial just before that to see what happens and hopefully see which bit of this the fault is on. So in here, I just had this fuse spur and this is so that I can switch off the socket outside. And this is just a spur off the radial. So what this is with these Wagos is I've split the circuit. So these exposed cables here are the other end of the radial. And what I've done is I've wired in with Wagos the outdoor socket. And so now when I turn the RCD on, if it trips, I know it's probably this outdoor socket. If it doesn't trip, I know that it's the sockets that power these two. So now I'm just gonna go and try 
the RCD, see what happens. So turn it back on and the RCD hasn't tripped. So most likely it's the washing machine or tumble dryer. So now power's back on and the power going through these Wagos. So the outdoor socket on the other side of this is wired in, but these two, well these three cables here, this single cable and these three cores, goes off to the washing machine and the tumble dryer over there. Now to check it's not the appliances themselves that are causing the problem, what I decided to do was run an extension lead from another circuit in the house that isn't tripping and just plug them both into that and see if it trips out that and it doesn't. So I know it's not the appliances. So I know it must be either the single socket that's behind there or there's two single sockets that power these two. And then there's an isolator, double pole isolator switch in the back of this cupboard. So I'm gonna have to pull these two out and have a look at the sockets and the isolator and see what the problem is. So there are the two sockets. Also another one down the side here. And then there's a double pole switch. I'm not gonna move this cupboard out. If I have to, I'll just cut a hole in the back. <clears throat> now, if you've got a condensing tumble dryer and you haven't got the condensate pipe plumbed, absolutely worth doing it rather than to drain it all the time. So I'm gonna get these two sockets off and this one down here and just see if there's anything obviously wrong. And hopefully if there is, I can sort it we'll get the power back on. Now we might have just found our issue. So not sure how easily you can see it on camera, but this cable here has been damaged, as has this earth here. And it looks like they've been damaged on this top, top plug that they've scratched. And it looks like it's worn away the sheathing on the cable there. And possibly, it looks like just there, there might be a tiny bit of copper exposed. And I'm wondering if this has caused the issue. But now they're all separated, I'm gonna get the power back on and see with them separated, do we still get the trip? So I've just stuck these Wagos on here. So now the supply, the circuit doesn't end here. It actually continues through to this socket. So I'm just gonna go and turn the power on and see if it flicks off. RCD up. Now let's stick this kitchen. Right. We just blew straight away. So unfortunately what I thought was the fault actually clearly isn't the fault. Saying that, by this socket now, there's a real like electrical smell. So I'm wondering if there's something wrong with this socket and it is actually something blowing down here that's the problem. That is strange, it smells very, very like burnt rubber. And there is actually a little bit of black here on this core. Definitely some kind of short on that cable, something's definitely not right. So what I've done is just taken this single socket off and just separated out all these cables. And now it's this one here on the left that you can see on my finger, there's all the soot on. So I'm one, I think this is probably the problem. The reason I split it all up is so that I can put the power on again. And if it blows, then I can be certain that it is just this cable. Something on here is wrong. Can't obviously see what it is. All right, moment of truth. All right, we've immediately gone again. So we can be certain it's definitely something on this cable. Not sure what, and might strip back some of the insulation a bit further and see if I can see anything wrong with it. Now I believe, looking at this cable, it goes down here and behind this skirting board. So I can see it pop out in that cupboard at that end behind the skirting. So worst case I have to pull this off and run something new, which would be annoying, but we will see. But given the soot, it definitely seems like the fault is here rather than in the wall somewhere. So what I've done here is just stuck the multimeter, this is all dead, across the live and the earth because I think that's where we've got the problem. And so I've just stuck it onto ohms and resistance so we can see quite a high resistance between these two. But if there was no connection at all, if I remove that, it just goes crazy high. So there is actually quite a high resistance fault between this earth and this live. And if I decide to do the other way, so if I go live and neutral, you can see we're just off the scale on resistance because there's no, nothing between them. 
And if I do neutral and earth, you can see again where it's off the scale. Between live and earth, we're getting something which isn't great. So somewhere here, we've got a problem and I need to work out what's happened to this cable, which is a bit of a worry and it might end up having to replace the cable. Whilst I've got the multimeter out, I thought I might as well test these others as well and just check. So nothing between neutral and earth, nothing between live and earth, nothing between live and neutral either. So the cable onwards on the rest of the circuit is fine. It's this one that is the problem. I just noticed, not sure you can see it on the camera that well, but actually this little smoke mark here, I think where when I flicked it on in this blue, slight bit of burning. A bit worrying, but hopefully we can sort it. So I've stripped away some of the grey, more of the grey insulation. Unfortunately, I can't actually see where the damage is. I think it must be that we've got an earth live short bit of damage somewhere just underneath here. Not sure how, but the damage must be down here because it's burnt and smoked up here. So it must be close. So I would have thought somewhere around here. But we found the fault. Now, I'm not going to fix it in this video, I'm going to make the fix a separate video. But this was just a quick one on how you can find a fault using just your multimeter and RCD as it already is. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more, and thanks for watching.